Hello everyone, myself Sayyid Adishamullah Khadri, VFX and 3D artist, currently studying BCA Bachelor's of Computer Application. In this video, we are gonna discuss about computer fundamentals uh, from computer hardware to operating systems and installing any other softwares etc. I am gonna visually represent this whole course in a 3D animation type from computer hardware to operating system, installing operating system. What is computer? A common operating machine purposely used for technological and educational research purpose. The definition of computer is it is an electronic device which store, process and gives a result in output form to the users through output devices such as our monitor, projector and printer. Charles Babbage also known as father of computer, he was born in 1791. A British mathematician, Babbage originated the concept of digital programmable computer. In early 1820s, the reference engine was built by Babbage, which was first calculating machine. Analytical engine considered as the first computer design and partially built by the Babbage. Henry Edward Robert, also known as Ed Robert, was an American engineer who invented first commercial successful personal computer in 1974 and named it as Altair 8800 was a third generation of computer. Since 1980s, fourth generation of computers were built on the idea of Ed Robert Altair 8800 till now. Some characteristics of computer include versatility where a computer can perform variety of tasks, different tasks such as playing songs to playing video games, from developing softwares to developing operating systems. Coming to the second one, accuracy, a computer can perform tasks with high degree of accuracy without any error. Speed, computer is very fast at processing information and performing calculation, millions of calculation at a time within a millisecond. Automation, a computer can perform tasks with uh, any human interaction where we can give the task to the computer and it can perform without any human interaction. Reliability computers are very reliable and can carry out countless of tasks at a time. Storage computers have built in memory storage called primary storage where they store the data for a particular moment of time in a DRAM, also known as RAM to process. Generations of computers. The evolution of computers started from 16th century. There are five generations of computers. The first generation of computers from 1950s. These early computers were massive machines that used vacuum tubes as processing power and magnetic drums for memory. They were incredibly large, expensive and consumed a lot of power, often filling entire room and uh, also producing a lot of heat. Coming towards second generation of computers, so they were started from 1960s. In this computer processing purpose, transistors are used and storage purpose, magnetic drums used. These are small compared to the first generation of computers. Third generation of computers were started from 1970s. In 1974, Ed Robert invented commercial and uh, personal computer, named it as Altair 8800. Uh, this generation of computers used integrated circuits which includes a number of uh, transistors etc and uh, for storage purpose magnetic cores were used. This computer used LSI large scale integration technology. Moving towards fourth generation of computers 1980s. The present day computers that you see today are the fourth generation of computers that started around 1975. This computer uses a large scale integrated circuits LSIC built on a single silicon chip called microprocessor and for storage purpose this computer is used a hard disk or SSD or currently we are using NVMe etc. Fifth generation of computers late 1990s. These computers use optic fiber technology to handle artificial intelligence, expert system, robotics, etc. These computers have high processing speed and are more reliable. Anatomy of the computer includes uh, input devices, CPU, control processing units, which has three steps. First one is control unit, second one is memory unit, and third one is arithmetic and logical unit. And fourth one is output, where the users input the data through in any input devices. 
any input devices such as uh, keyboard, mouse, microphone, etc. Where the data goes to the control unit, it sends the data to the ALU and in ALU it performs millions of calculation and send it to the main memory and then it uh, the functions continues then it shares to the output devices such as printer speaker monitor projector etc moving towards the new chapter computer hardware we have divided this into multiple parts starting with motherboard processor chipset hdd ssd and nvme ram gpu smps and input output panel A motherboard is the main printed circuit board PCB in a computer that houses various essential components such as the CPU, central processing unit, memory, expansion slots, connectors for peripherals and uh, other integrated circuits. It serves as a central hub that allows the component to communicate with each other and uh, facilitate the overall functioning to the computer system. In essence, the motherboard acts as a backbone of the computer providing the platform for all other hardware's components to interact and work together harmoniously. Moving on to a processor also known as a central processing unit CPU is the primary component of a computer responsible for executing instructions and performing calculations. A processor consists of integrated heat spreader, metal package and die also known as integrated circuits. This integrated circuits inside has a few different sections but the mostly recognizable are cores. The middle section of the integrated circuit is known as a ring interconnect and the rightmost part of this IC is known as integrated graphic processor and the middle lanes are known as shared L3 cache and the left topmost portion of the IC is known as memory control and the left to bottom most portion is known as a platform IO which controls input and output of the computer. Heading towards the chipset, a chipset is a set of electronic components on a motherboard that manages the data flow between the processor, memory, peripherals and other system components. It acts as a central communication hub for various parts of the computer. The processor controls PCI Express slots, supports multi-card configuration, it controls the RAM which is based on DDR4 memory and the chipset controls the processor and it also controls 14 high-speed USB ports and Intel integrated PCI Express network connections manage the engine firmware and yet PCI Express and controls 10 SATA 3.0 ports also it controls Intel high definition audio and controls very different parts of the motherboard and optionally it also controls rapid storage technology moving forward to 2.4 HDD, SSD and NVMe SDD stands for hard disk drive which is a data storage device used in many desktops and laptop computers. Inside the HDD we have a disk mounted to a motor which spins at the thousands of RPM and a printed circuit board which control the HDD. The moving arm which has read write heads move across the disk to access a single particular track among half a million of tracks. The right hand changes the directions of the localized magnetic domains and the read head senses the changes in the domains and send the signals to the PCB. The HDDs are slower than SSD. SSD stands for solid state drive. A single SSD chip consists of multiple 3D NANDs stacked together. A single SSD chip can store up to 4 terabytes of data. SSDs are smaller, faster and quieter than hard disk drive. The NVMe also has the same amount of data to be stored in a particular chip. NVMe consists of a DRAM, a controller chip and data storage chips also known as 3D NANDs. Moving on to the RAM. Also known as random access memory, it is a temporary memory bank where your computer stores data it needs to retrieve quickly. GPU stands for graphic processing unit which is an electronic circuit that can perform mathematical calculation at high speed. GPUs are mostly used for graphic related work such as video editing. A graphic card has fans, heat sink and uh, heat pads. It consists of PCB with a GPU integrated circuit in the middle, VRAM chips covering all around and a VRM also known as voltage regulated module on site which control all the voltage regulated things. 
on the other hand we have hdmi and display ports and a pci interface and the other side of the graphics card we have input voltage connectors moving towards smps also known as switch module power supply which has a power switch and a input and a 12 volt fan we have main transformer and a control pcb the main transformer control high voltage and converts it into lower voltage and we have multiple voltage outputs which can be used to connect to the motherboard starting from SATA module cpu vga pcie etc the smps output range from 3.3 volts to 12 volt heading towards input and output panels in most of the motherboards we have usb ports antenna audio input slash output ethernet input and uh, mouse and keyboard inputs that's it for the computer hardware heading towards operating system so in this session i'm gonna teach you how to convert a usb into a bootable usb configuration open any browser in your laptop or pc search for windows 10 iOS to download open the first link from the microsoft download windows 10 disk image scroll down until you find a create windows 10 installation media click on download tool now button wait for the download to start open the media control open the media creation tool open the media creation tool wait for it to open it will just uh, look for the updates if possible it will it will look for some updates now click on accept wait for a moment and uh, when you get to the option what do you want to do click on create installation media rather than upgrade this pc if you want to upgrade this pc you can click on upgrade this pc create on installation media and click on next and click on next again and click on usb flash drive if you want to convert usb into bootable or you can also download iso file later on you can convert it into or burn it or burn the cd to make it into bootable click on next it will download the windows operating system by selecting your right removable drive or usb flash drive click on next button and the download and the download will start begin after the downloading it will progress and convert your usb normal usb into a bootable usb heading toward the targeted pc or laptop where you want to install windows 10 just plug in your usb and turn on your pc slash laptop there are multiple ways to enter into the bios the most common are f2 f3 and f8 by pressing f2 f3 or f8 according to your motherboard you will get into the bios configuration where you just need to set the boot priority in this particular video i am installing windows 10 on my laptop it is easy the bios utility is easy because we can directly change the boot priority within the easy mode if you are facing any difficulties of finding your boot priority just dm or comment under this video i'm gonna reply it to soon after changing the boot priority just uh, click on save and uh, let the laptop or your computer restart we will get a windows setup dialog box just click on next and start now if you have your product key just type in it or if you don't have just click on i don't have a product key select uh, operating system i prefer you guys select just a windows 10 pro and click on next and click on i accept that license and terms anyhow no one gonna study it click on custom install windows only advance click on your drive if you have multiple drive select the particular drive you want to install it on select the drive and click on next and the installation process of windows will begin the status will show the process after the windows installation is done you just need to set up it just click on just set your region and click on next to select your keyboard layout type click on yes pin then click on skip you just need to configure some settings if if you have any microsoft account just enter it and sign in if you don't have just click on offline method name your pc if you want password just write your password if you add password you need to add three security questions can be used to reset your password then click on what type of privacy settings you want to your 
device i prefer you guys just set it on no and customize your pc according to it that's it your windows 10 installation is finished uh, you can install any software or uh, any programs you want to continue with uh, that's it for the video I'll meet you guys in the next one that's it for the course that's it for the course i'm gonna meet you in another video until then peace for any queries or doubts regarding the installation or computer hardware just contact us on a discord server or comment down in the comment section below or you can contact us on instagram or at facebook as well thanks for watching see you around